so by now, um, some of you have seen my interview I did with KOAM Fox, and uh, I was interviewed for about 30, 35 minutes, something like that, and they cut that down to about a minute, 25 seconds of me actually talking. So <clears throat> I just wanted to give some information on the parts that weren't, you know, the most emotional or broadcast worthy um, that they missed. Um, first question I was asked was, why are the FDA regulations taking place now? Um, to which I responded, uh, Big Tobacco's realized they're losing customers. Um, there's states out there, such as uh, California is a big example, and Not Blowing Smoke uses them as an example uh, quite often. Uh, they take loans from the federal government uh, based off of what they assume their sin tax revenue for the year is going to be. So they assume they're going to take in this much from people smoking cigarettes, and they build their budget around it. <clears throat> the issue is, estimated in 2013, 19% of all adult uh, citizens of the U.S. were smokers. And as of 2016, only 15%. So you're looking at a 4% drop um, in total population that's smoking. And that's a even bigger percentage drop in terms of consumer base that's smoking. So they've lost millions and millions of dollars in tobacco sales or sin tax revenue. So they got to find a new place to get it. Um, because those loans were taken from the federal government and the FDA is run by the federal government um, by imposing these PMTAs which are three hundred thousand dollars or more uh, per item that, that uh, involves <coughs> atomizers uh, each different type of coil for a tank um, each level of nicotine in each flavor so it if you're a juice line that only has five flavors, but you have five nick levels, that's 25 PMTAs, uh, at least to my knowledge. Um, so you're looking at millions, if not billions of dollars in potential PMTA filings for just one loan uh, brick and mortar PM, uh, to apply, um, so that in two years they can continue to do business as usual. Um, another question I was asked was about the health concerns because that's one of the big things we're not allowed to talk about the health concerns anymore um, in terms of me to a customer um, and I told them that Public Health England has uh, published a report stating that through their findings e-cigarettes are 95 percent safer than traditional combustible tobacco cigarettes um, that is through scientific study. It is funded by Public Health England, um, a pretty large group. And Europe accepts that as fact, but the United States will not accept these European studies um, because there's no money in that. So, um, another question I was asked is why are these regulations being imposed besides the taxes? Like, what is the FDA's reasoning? <clears throat> and my response was, well, they're saying it's for the kids, um, that we market towards children, and that there's a three times higher chance of uh, people under the age of 18 experience, uh, experiencing e-cig products or vapor products. The thing with that is it's become such a wider market that you're going to have to expect some sort of growth in underage exposure. The second thing about that is kids with the truth campaigns and things of that nature have seen how harmful cigarettes are, how harmful chew is, that it causes throat, lung, mouth cancer, <clears throat> that it can cause heart disease, and they've had family members die from it. But they still want to be part of that counterculture. So by trying an e-cigarette, I mean, I can't, you know, state that all of them are using zero nicotine, but by trying an e-cigarette that they've seen evidential studies on showing that it's 95% safer, they don't feel like they're harming their body as much. And do I agree with them? Uh, yes, I do. But the issue is, 
I don't support underage vaping, period. Um, would I rather, if I had a child, um, have him smoke or vape? Well, I'd rather him do neither. Um, or her, sorry. But, you know, if I was given two options, I would choose the least harmful option. Um, the, the next question they asked me was something along the lines of, what do you think it will do to business? And they kind of cut it off. Um, they cut out most of the facts and numbers that I stated. Um, there's estimates that currently there's 14,700 brick and mortar shops in the United States and then hundreds if not thousands of online retailers. So the rough estimate most people have thrown out is somewhere around 20,000. Well each shop on average employs um, roughly four or five people. So you're looking at you know 20,000 businesses shutting down. 100,000 people losing their job. The, inc the economic impact of it, um, based to these ridiculous PMTA filing procedures, uh, it will shut down the industry, and not just from a U.S. standpoint. Companies in China <clears throat> aren't going to import their product to the United States, so these people that are like, oh, well, I'll just buy stuff from overseas. These Chinese companies are going to have to file for these PMTAs or their stuff will be seized in customs anyway. <clears throat> and when you're a Chinese company and you live off, you know, pennies on the dollar in terms of profit margin, um, take for example the TFV4. It's got 16 different, at least 16 different coil options. You're looking at $300,000 per coil option. Um, so they would have to charge a ridiculous amount per coil. You're looking at in excess of $30, $40 per coil so that they could recuperate that, PMT, that PMTA filing um, procedure. It is also, uh, they never touched on the fact that it has stopped the market um, or frozen it. Past August 8th, no new products are allowed on the market. So that stifles creation, that styles, stifles innovation, uh, safety has been, you know, just shut down. You're not going to allow companies to come out with products that, you know, have this built-in protection that will keep them from getting too hot or overcharging the battery or allowing an atomizer to fire by itself. Uh, safety features such as, like, lock codes. I've seen companies that were working on fingerprint recognition systems, you know, similar to the new Samsung and iPhones where you, you have to press your fingerprint to it and it recognizes it as you and only unlocks for you. Those systems are now stifled and dead. Uh, they're, they're never going to be applied. Um, but they could have been, you know, a, a great potential for increased safety in the market. I mean, if only your fingerprint could unlock your device. One, it's a theft deterrent, and two, if you leave your mod unintended around your children, there's a, I mean, you shouldn't do that anyways, but there's a lot less likelihood that your kids would pick it up and be able to use it. Um, and that's, you know, pretty much most of the stuff that they didn't cover in the interview. Um, there's some other, you know, just little things and, and tidbits here and there. But I just wanted to give you the rest of what this August 8th dealings is doing. Um, it affects online uh, sales as well. Um, from what I've been told, you have to have a third-party recognition software um, so that people can't just click, oh yeah, I'm 18, send me my stuff. Um, which is good um, and also bad because that has been you know, a side that we haven't been able to truly regulate this entire time, but these software and companies that provide it are also exceedingly expensive, and so it just increases the cost of, you know, operation. Um, and when the cost of operation increases, the amount of services you can offer decreases, and the amount of, you know, employees decreases. <clears throat> so we're going to continue to try and help people as best we can and make it through this you know, tough time. We've got hope for the future. There's some pending lawsuits they didn't talk about. 
um, that could help reverse some of these rulings. <clears throat> but we're not at that point yet, so right now we're going to comply with the rules um, as best as we can, um, charging the, the fee to test juice and not helping you put together your coils as you know painful as it is to watch. I mean, I'm three blocks away from New Hope's facility and I have a bunch of customers who have um, mental disabilities or um, learning disabilities and explaining, you know, I can't help you um, build your coil or I can't replace that coil in your tank for you um, is a difficult task and I had to do it yesterday, I'm, I'll probably have to do it today and I'll have to do it as long as we continue operations. So uh, I have hope for the future. I hope these lawsuits go through. I hope Ron Johnson, Senator from Wisconsin, um, head of Homeland Security, gets his response from the head of the FDA and makes that public. Um, so keep an eye out on that. Other things to check out, august8th.org and notblowingsmoke.org, CASA. Um, if your local shop isn't a part of Sfada, get them part of get them to be a part of Sfada. Um, the vaping militia, join them. AVA, uh, all great organizations, and I know they've made a coalition <clears throat> to help combat a lot of these regulations and start lawsuits and things of that nature. Um, but we're currently, you know, sitting at a waypoint, trying to figure out what to do. Um, and for the time being we will comply as best as we can until um, we can no longer do it so anyways if you guys have any further questions let me know hit me with a personal message i'll get back as quick as i can and uh, have a good day